Hey everyone, it's Jason here with a new update for Fire Jumpers Inferno, and I've got a great one for you guys today. I have been working on uh, spot fires and uh, the containment line and uh, some other kind of fire properties, so let me show you. Uh, so I found some area here that's quite flat and all the same territory, so fuel, fuel type, uh, so it will kind of help uh, show what I mean here. So just to start off, I've got uh, kind of a, uh, a perimeter of these little squares, and they turn white when there's a new fire. And this is just the objective of the game. Uh, so when players interact with these with the perimeter here, these little red squares will turn green. And the objective is to turn them all green, uh, or you know maybe like 90% of them or something like that. Uh, so I'll have some kind of indicator that will keep track of that. Um, yeah, so that is with this, but right now there are no spot fires because there's not enough wind. So let's increase the wind a little bit. And let's increase the game speed just to get a little bit going on here. All right, so let's bring that back down. And we'll take a look. So now what happens here, I want it to be uh, a little bit more precise with uh, how spot fires work. So basically it creates an amber and based on the size of the amber, uh, they will, and, and the wind speed, it will try to land in front. But you'll see these ones disappear because the amber is not large enough for it to travel far enough to actually land. So even though it, it is being created. So the way it works a little bit, so I've done a little bit of research, Google did here, was the fire intensity uh, and, the, and basically the size of the fire will create uh, larger ambers. And then that same fire intensity will cause the amber to float up into the air up to a certain point, at which point then the wind will carry that amber forward and depending on how large that amber is, so how long it will live for, like five seconds or 10 seconds, or depending on that fire intensity and the wind, it will travel further. So right now, yes, you've got uh, higher winds, but again, the fire intensity is not strong enough to create large enough ambers. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change it again. We're gonna change that moisture level to very low. So now we're gonna get a higher fire intensity so let's bring this up again. All right, now we're getting a lot here. All right. So now you're gonna see larger ambers and still some of them will not be able to reach. Uh, they will die out, but let's say this one may actually hit the ground here. Yes, it does. So now you can see it's really like just a volley of these ambers happening. But that's because it's very low moisture, very high winds. And so the frequency of what this kind of happens uh, just happens naturally. So fire intensity, larger ambers, stronger winds, uh, add all that together and you create a recipe for uh, spot fires. Uh, so it's, uh, it's quite, quite interesting. Uh, one of the things too about spot fires you'll see is that they are... Um, uh, not, not as high intensity as the main fire. And this will allow, uh, you know, units to be able to deal with spot fires before they become full fires. Now, that said, uh, a spot fire will be turned into a complete fire if not dealt with. So when this fire gets close enough, these fires, even though they're already on fire, will turn into a full fire. Uh, and so that's, that's what's kind of happening here. Um, all right, so uh, this is uh, pretty good so far. So let's go and take a look at a different area and watch the properties of what these spot fires look like in a more kind of wooded area. So the, the lighter green is kind of, uh, again, more like shrubs. I think these are shrub sevens, and these are kind of darker uh, trees. So uh, let's start a fire here in the shrubs and the trees. Okay. All right. 
And uh, now we'll also uh, increase the wind speed. And we're going to bring this down to uh, a very low moisture again. And let's take a look. All right. Ooh, all right. This is what happens in one hour with very low moisture and high winds. So I also updated the colors of the fire. So uh, the red to yellow is generally managed by uh, ground troops um, and, and engines and things like that. Um, but the moment it starts to get into the blue area, this is where the fire intensity is just too strong and you need uh, air support. Um, and you can see the volleys here. I mean, it is much larger ambers, uh, easily able to push forward uh, and you know continuously create uh, issues and problems. So even though you create a fire line, these ambers are going to be very hard to deal with, uh, especially again high kilometer, 30 kilometers an hour, very very low moisture. Um, and there's a lot more of the perimeter here. Here you can see a lot of the green ones are, are happening because of the road creates a, a natural perimeter. Uh, so that is, that's good like that. Um, yeah, so let's see, maybe I can uh, get one of the aircrafts here. Uh, one of the aircraft. Uh, I also updated uh, a little bit of how the transition uh, happens with the aircraft where it follows a little bit with more lag or drag perhaps um, so let's take a look here come down get some water all right so yes yeah, so you can see how the airplane kind of swings back and forth just a little bit more uh, than maybe if you've seen my previous videos. All right, now let's see if I can do a drop here and turn some of these green. It might take several drops, so we'll see. Um, all right, reduce my speed. All right, let's take a look here. Yeah, just a few. These are just, the fire is just too strong. At this wind speed, at this moisture level, you would need several aircraft all coming together one after another to be able to suppress that. But yes, the colors really do make it interesting uh, now. So um, just a, a, a better visualization of what is going on. Uh, before it was showing the rate of spread, which was okay, but uh, this kind of helps identify which units should uh, attack which front. So, uh, all right, I think that is the end of this video. Uh, so thank you for your time, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.